back, relax, and enjoy as Don Tony gives you news and reviews from AEW, NXT, and Indie Wrestling 2. Know what's happening in the world of wrestling without the hate and clickbait. It's Wednesday night, Don O Might. And now, your host, Don Tony. Excuse me for a minute. Got to cover my tits as much as I can. I'm surrounded by stunards. Literally, as the intro started with some matarazzas in the chat room, I'm like, you know what? I ain't wearing that fucking shirt tonight. I'm surrounded by stunats. What's up with some of you AEW folk out there? What's up with some of you trying to get my attention? You want to get my attention? Send me money. If I was a single guy and you were kind of like attractive, you know, maybe you offer a little bit of suki suki. But I've been fucking saying for five goddamn days that WWE is bringing TV 14 back, but not how everybody portrays it. And it's like people don't listen. Luchasaurus has the dumbest, pointless, least creative turn in the recent history of pro wrestling. And I got AEW Stanat saying to me, well, down the line, he might turn on Jungle Boy. Friends, I want you to start right now thinking about a moment, the last five or 10 years in pro wrestling on TV that you thought was fucking stupid fucking stupid and you turn around and you say to me that example and what if i countered it and i said well no 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 you know oh vince making fun of you know making out in front of linda that was awful and tasteless yeah but no in the end linda's gonna get up she's gonna get her revenge triple h banging a mannequin oh but kane's gonna get his revenge you don't try to fix something that's not broken all right we have anything we could break here i can't do that because somebody would be very very hurt can we break something here i i don't think i have anything to break oh no we definitely cannot break that i don't have anything to break here if it's not broken don't try to fix it and you try to fix something that's not broken and then you try to fix it later on i mean what the fuck? come on let's Let's talk about NXT. Let's talk about AEW. Let's talk about Ric Flair and Jeff Jarrett. Oh, my God. 2009 all over again. I'm getting those 2009 vibes, brother. Oh, we'll have some fun tonight. I'm, I'm in a little bit of a good mood. Little headache, you know, dealing with stupidity the last couple of days. But I guess that's what happens, you know, when you do this shit. You know, you know what's funny tonight? Okay, you know what? Since you mentioned two dimes, let's mention two dimes. All right, earlier today, I don't know if you, I, I know the, the screen is a little off-centered, but earlier today it was announced that the former two dimes, um, you know, Cole Carter is going to be appearing on Dynamite. He's going to take on Ricky Starks, and we found out later on it was for the uh, FTW uh, championship, Open Challenge. I see all these people online like, AEW's got to stop bringing in people fresh off of NXT, fresh off of this. I could see if it's a bigger star, but they're just taking people. Do these douchebags realize that Cole Carter, the former Two Dimes, appeared on AEW television almost 10 times over the last year? The dark doesn't count but dark doesn't count meanwhile they say every other week no 42 and 6 is 42 and 6 yeah it does count he was in AEW before he went to nxt he had many matches does anybody bother to look does anybody bother to do any research i'm not saying that he's gonna be great he's got a nice physique i'm kind of jealous of that and if you saw my little line 
on his social media earlier today. I said, tonight, Cole Carter sleeps with the Starks. Not the Sharks, but the Starks. Ricky Starks almost said it exactly the way that I wrote it, but good enough, good enough. Kavan says he's still an ex-WWE guy. Did you say he was an ex-AEW guy when he went to NXT? Come on. You know, I, I know in this day and age, everybody tries to have the last word. Like you write something and then somebody has to say something otherwise. And even if you correct them, they still got to add the extra line. They said, like earlier today, you know, I, I don't deny it. I used to dislike Sean Ross Sapp. Many years ago, I didn't like him, didn't like his style. There's a lot of things I didn't like about him. Then I started to see how hard he does work, and he does have legit connections, and I became, you know, a follower of his work. I don't agree on everything that he says, and I am a subscriber to Fightful. I don't mention it that often, but I am. And, you know, I write on Twitter today, that the Luchasaurus turn is one of the dumbest things that I have seen creatively in recent memory. And somebody actually wrote on my social media, but Sean Ross Sapp said it's the greatest thing ever. You could kick my dog. You could spit in my parents' face. You could grab my fiance's ass. But do not, do not disrespect my opinion by saying to me, well, Jason says this, or Sean says this, or Kevin says this. Do you run on their pages and say, well, Don Tony thinks it's one of, you never fucking do that, but you do that shit to me. That is one of the most disrespectful things you could do to anybody out there. Respect people's opinions. I respect Sean's opinion. I disagree with it, but don't do that shit. Because honestly, you don't get on my good side. And yes, I do block people eventually because I just don't want the headache. I'm in my 50s. You think I want to argue with people about a Luchasaurus baby face turn that made zero sense tonight? Jesus. Jesus. All right. Later on in the show, we're going to be giving away this very sexy Nikita Lyons autographed photo. For everybody who was drooling and saying, oh, my God, I want that. Well, you should have just stopped by the watch party. You would have been eligible. So Friday, we got an awesome watch party contest coming up. I will give you a hint. There's going to be two prizes. One is going to feature the baddest woman on the planet. I think you could figure out who that is. And the other one is the baddest man on the planet. So you're going to have the baddest man and the baddest woman. Those are the hints for Friday. So, all right. Um, let's talk about AEW first. You know, today was actually easy watching. I took very few notes, not out of laziness, but I thought AEW's show tonight was very easy viewing. It had the good, it had the bad, it had the ugly. You know, some of what we saw with Kingston and Jericho, you know, was a little bit, eh, camera work was horrendous. I mean, my God. Who the fuck in the back is producing the cameras? And Jericho is laid on the mat. Jericho's going like this. And the fucking camera stays on him. I'm like, do you realize that AEW botches and every social media account that don't like AEW is not going to zoom in on that? Do super slow-mo, 4K, double 4K, double 4K super slow-mo to show, you know, shit like that. We know what it is. If you watch closely, you hear, you see Eddie Kingston's lips moving every time Jericho goes for a pin attempt. You think Eddie Kingston's saying, I hate you, cocksucker. I'm going to make you bleed again. I hope you die. Oh, I'm going to shove that bat up your ass. You think that's what he's saying? No, no. But we want suspension of disbelief. That's what's beautiful about pro wrestling. Don't shove it in our face. Otherwise, because there's always going to be people out there to ruin it. Any of you out there that remember my growing up Don Tony stories, I'll tell you one very quickly for people that don't know. It's the God honest truth. Back in 1983, when I still thought pro wrestling was real, one time I went to my aunt's house for a birthday party, and WWF wrestling was on, I think at like 5 o'clock at night or 6 o'clock at night, Channel 9 on a Saturday. I think it was Saturday night. I don't remember what day it was. It was a weekend, though. And I'm on the couch, and I'm watching wrestling, 
And my Uncle Joe, God rest his soul, goes sits down next to me. And he's like, you like that fake shit? And I'm like, it's not fake, Uncle Joe. Now I'm a little kid. I'm a little kid. I'm like, it's not fake, Uncle Joe. What do you mean it's not fake? Fina, you got a blank tape over there? He grabs a fucking VHS tape, and I'm sitting there. What am I supposed to do? I'm a fucking kid. He takes a tape. He puts it in the VCR. He records about 10 seconds of it. He's recording. He's recording. And then he's like, ah! And then he rewinds it back, hits the pause button, and he does super, super slow motion. And you saw Jay Strongbow, and I think the Samoans, I think it was. You saw him go like this. Almost like Kira Hogan with the drop kick that uh, airball tonight, air kick. You know, so my uncle enjoyed shoving it in my face that it was fake. Ever since that night, I, I realized that a lot of it was bullshit. But, you know, we don't need a whole bunch of Uncle Joes on social media. You know, just change the fucking camera. Change the camera. So... Yes, Kevin, I saw the botch of Ty Conti not being able to open the cage. That was obviously a flub as well. You know, good that there were bars on the cage that were big enough that some of these small guys could slip through. I mean, eventually they got the cage open because I don't think Hager was able, and Hager is not going to bend those bars. It is kind of funny with Shark Week. And you can't open the shark cage. Uh, by the way, you know, I don't mind that it's shark week. I don't care. But you see the graphics online today promoting Kingston versus Jericho, and there's a big giant shark in the middle. I'm like, you know, not for nothing. That kind of makes this look cartoonish. You know, I just, I didn't think that that was necessary. I thought it was stupid, to be honest with you. But hey, it's a graphic. I don't care. As long as the match was okay, it was okay. So, Let's run down the card quickly, rapido. Darby Allen versus Brody King. Brody King gets the clean pin with the Gonzo Bomb. You know, the Oompa Loompa, you know, looked pretty good in this match. It was very, very physical. The only part of the match that I didn't like was when um, Brody King pretty much picked up Darby. And it looks like he's holding him by the neck. And Darby just gets lifeless, drops him outside the ring. And you know I don't like that referee already, especially after Forbidden Door. And I, was tr I swear to God, I swear on my family, about three or four minutes before the finish of this match, I'm like, you know what? I got to give him a little bit of credit. He's not doing a stupid shit with the two count anymore. I think he learned his lesson from Forbidden Door. But he's counting the 10. And I swear to God, I went back and I timed it. It was 41 and a half seconds to count to nine. I mean, I understand you don't want to do it too fast because you don't want to screw up the guy that's trying to run it. But this, this is legit. This is no bullshit. This is legitimately how slow he was counted today. One. Two. Three. Fuck out of here. So he gets to nine. It's almost a minute later. And... That's when Brody King finished Darby off with the Gonzo Bomb, gets the win. By the way, shout out to everybody who is here live tonight. Much love as always. I appreciate all of your support. If you are enjoying the show, you know, get off your lazy. Can't even say get off your lazy hands. Pick up that hand and hit that thumbs up. All right, after the match is over, Brody King is not done. Basically, he's attacking Darby Allen because he wants Sting to come out. He wants, he's got cheese in the ring. He wants the rat to come out. So here comes Sting, you know, so concerned about, you know, his partner. And he's just walking down the ring, as Sting always does. And they brawl for a few seconds. The lights go out. They come back on, and he has Malachi Black in the ring. He spits the mist in Sting's, gotta be honest, it looked like he spit it in his mouth. I mean, honestly, no joke, especially with COVID and just hygiene. I don't even want my fiance to spit in my mouth. I mean, I know some of you out there, you perverts, you watch porn, and then you'll see somebody go, <clears throat> and that's supposed to be sexy and hot. You spit in my face, I'll fucking blow my nose in your face. Let's see how sexy you think that is. In fact, I'll blow my nose in my hand, and I'll stick my fingers in your mouth, mandible claw style. Let's see how you like it. 
So I'd be upset if I was Sting also, Malachi Black spitting the mist in my mouth. Because Sting, if you don't realize it, when Sting is knocked out, Sting looks like, oh boy, I got to be careful how I say this. This isn't 2006 anymore, Don Tony. Um, he looks like one of those special people on the bus that is just looking out the window and whether there's like cars going by or a shooting or you see grassland or you see earthquakes or a fire, they all have the same look on their face. That's how Sting looks when he gets beat up. If you look at him in the ring and you're holding him down, he's like this. Malachi Black spit the mist in his mouth. So I'd be upset if I was Sting also. See, when I see smiley face emojis, job done. Job done. I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm trying to make people laugh. I think when you saw my tits, you probably laughed a little bit. I'm surrounded by Stu Nuts. But you know what? You Stu Nuts support what I do. You have a right to be a dick towards me once in a while. So I don't want anybody in the chat to be offended. You know, sometimes when I call some people out, take that as, you know, kind of like a badge of honor. So there's no hatred here. But don't do that shit on Twitter. I was serious about that. You're not going to do that on other people's page. Don't do it on me. Don't. So, spits the mist, and here comes Miro. The Redeemer. The Redeemer. I am going to redeem all the pansies out there by staring at them with my cool two-tone looking glasses and i must do the awkward stare see i don't have regular sunglasses here so i will be that i'm the edema and he's just looking and is an awkward extended time because we're going to commercial and they want the edema to just stare at the house of black as we go fade to commercial and they don't fade to commercial right away so the edema is just looking he's just looking and Malachi Black with this little grin on his face. Just a little smirk. And what does that do? It sparks the internet wrestling community. Huh? Is Miro joining the House of Black? Are you fucking stupid? Are you fucking kidding me? Because Malachi Black does this. How's about he was smirking towards Miro because he didn't have the balls to get in the ring. But it was fucking trending after that when we went to commercial. I went and I looked online, and all I saw were all these goofs saying, Is Miro joining the House of Black? Uh, the Redeemer joined the House of Black? No, he's not! Morons. Now, if he does, you have the permission to call me a moron. So the Redeemer does nothing. We go to a commercial. We come back and we get the confrontation with Cold Carter. Why am I still talking like that? I don't even sound like me at all. Anyway, Ricky Starks with a little one-liner, bringing it up as NXT days. Rumor has it that you used to sw swim with the Sharks the last time we seen you. Swim with the Fishes. They set up a match later on. John Moxley and Yuta Michinoku over the best friends. I like this match up until one part. I know they're trying to make Wheel of Yuta the next homegrown superstar. They want to try to put him in the same category as Sammy Guevara, Darby Allen, Wheeler Utah. They're trying. They're trying. You know, it still makes me feel like Maven joining Evolution, but whatever. So he gets the pin over Chuck Taylor. Actually, there was one moment that made me laugh and one moment that made me want to poke my eyeballs out. One moment, Wheeler Utah's in the ring with Trent. Wheeler Utah wants Chuck. And Chuck is like, me? Me? And the announcers are hyping it up. So you see Trent tagging Chuck Taylor. The crowd did not react. I was like, good for you, you prick bastard, because I don't like Chuck Taylor. Seriously. I, have, I still have loads of AEW cards sitting on my desk. You remember when we opened that box? The fucking AEW gods up above, they cursed me. We opened up like nine uh, Chuck Taylor cards. I tore them up as we were opening up the thing. I don't care. I, it's not against him personally, but he, he looks like a disheveled AJ Styles from TNA. He dresses like he thinks is a major. Chuck Taylor sucks. In my opinion, he sucks. When some people say to me, like, you could erase some per person's career. Last week, somebody said, um, Eva Marie or uh, who was it? It was Eva Marie and uh, Charlie Haas, Jackie Gator. 
if you put Chuck Taylor on there, I would rather watch Eva Marie and Jackie Gata. Seriously. I never liked Chuck Taylor. Terrible. So he gets the tag. There's no reaction. I'm like, ah, uh, I, I wonder how you feel right now. Meanwhile, he's like, aha, I'm wrestling on TV and you're not. I'm not, I, you know, when people say to me, oh, you're just jealous. You want to be in the ring. You know, 20 years ago, I might have got a little triggered from it. But now I say to you, what the fuck do you think? I'm Ric Flair. I'm in my 50s. I'm going to fucking wrestle. Are you fucking stupid? So that made me laugh. But the part that did not make me laugh, I understand. And we always joke about, especially in the watch parties, where people kick out of moves that they have no business kicking out. And today we watched Willie Yuta get attacked off the top rope, hit with a pile driver, and then hit with a stuffed pile driver right after that. And he kicks out at two. As soon as I saw that, I said, the fuck out of here. You could, if you listen closely at the commentary, even the commentators were trying to cover that shit up. You heard William Regal say, if that was six months ago, uh, Wheeler Utah would have never kicked out of that. His training with his neck is what caused him to kick out of that. Get the fuck out of here. Wheeler Utah's neck looks like a Pez dispenser. I want him to lift up and give me one of those Japanese candies that come out of his neck. You know, all those candies on Amazon that are just written in a different language. You don't know what it is. And you buy it anyway. And you're like, oh, this is good. And then you see right next to the ingredients, a cartoon picture of a fish head. And I'm like, wait a minute, this fucking has fish in it? So Yuta kicks out of two pile drivers, fucking awful, but gets the win. Good. Got the win. All right. They're still doing the awful storyline. I totally respect each and every one of you out there that hate Bruce Pritchard and WWE Creative, that think some of the storylines and the skits on WWE TV are awful. I am with you 100%. But when you are fucking silent about Sterling Mark Sterling for two, three weeks, walking around with a clipboard, trying to get Swerve Strickland fired, and then the storyline last week is, Orange Cassidy, you're the last person, we're the last signature we need. Sign this and Swerve Strickland is gone. Well, I need to consult with my lawyer. That's my Orange Cassidy voice. I need to consult with my lawyer. Oh, I got the proposal. How's about your guy, Tony Nice, and my guy, Orange Cassidy? We fight in the match. And if Orange Cassidy loses, he signed your petition, and Swerve Strickland is gone. But if he wins, the fucking storyline continues. You're going to not tell me that's one of the most, not even WWE would come up with something awful like that. But it continues today. And this time we get a rapper by the name of, who is it? Oh, Kevin Gates. Kevin Gates. Look, I don't follow his music, but I've heard of him. Uh, when Sterling Mark Sterling tried to be hip, and he's like, oh, I thought you were a young M.A. If you look online, there is a running joke that Kevin Gates and young M.A. are the same person. You think Sterling Mark Sterling knew that? You think I knew that? <laughs> I Googled it. I make myself look smart. Yeah, man. You never knew about that? Oh, you got to go check it around. And M.A. and Kevin Gates. You don't know how many people got pissed off. You want to piss off Kevin Gates? You just say he looks like young M.A. And you'll see him go like this. So what happens? They want young M.A. to sign the contract. He doesn't want to sign the contract. So what happens? They piss him off with the young M.A. thing. And because Kevin Gates does not, does not know how to wrestle, and they want him to, you know, pull a punch on Tony Nese like this, you know, like this, like this. No, what does he do? Ow. He literally clocked Tony Nese in the face. And I see people, are, oh, that looked awesome. Yeah, let me punch you legitimately in the mouth. And you'll say it's awesome too. Let me kick your cat and see how awesome it looks. Not supposed to really hit the person. He literally decked Tony Nese in the face. But he's a multi million dollar media mogul, so it's okay. And then they shoved this giant cake into Mark Sterling's face. Because all of this is about a celebration party for Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland. 
as I watched the cake being shoved in his face, just because he's not on the on OnlyFans showing his cheeky ass to everybody, uh, I remember everybody getting livid angry that WWE is doing storylines with shoving cakes in people's faces. And now today with Sterling Mark Sterling, oh, they connect, he really connected with that cake shot. Suddenly shoving cake in people's faces is okay, as long as it's not the person that you like. I like the celebration. I expected a tag team to come out and challenge them for the titles. Instead, this was all about doing a skit with Kevin Gates. That's what it felt like. Alex Silver and John Reynolds, with all due respect, wow, it sounds like this episode sucked more than I thought. No, it gets better. They have a pointless segment in the back, and as you're watching this, you're like, oh, here comes the Rampage match. For some reason, instead of Butcher having a shirt that says Butcher, they offer a shirt that says Butch instead. They don't like it. They beat the shit out of them. Adam Hangman Page comes to the rescue, and that's what Hangman Page has been basically demoted to. He's teaming up with John Silver on Friday to take on the Butcher and the Blade. A segment that was designed, we got to have a Rampage match. Hey, we'll do Page and Silver versus Butcher and Blake. Yeah, but how do we fucking sell it to the people? Oh, I, I have an idea. Dude, dude, they'll be in the back. And we'll get a shirt made up that says Butch. And we'll offer it to the Butcher. And he'll get mad. And he'll just beat him up. And we got a match. I'm getting a fucking headache. Ricky Starks over Cole. Carter with a spear. Christian Cage. Luchasaurus. Destroy. Destroy the Varsity Blondes. I think we all expected that. So, now I can't show you it all because we don't want copyright problems. But what I'm about to tell you, if I'm exaggerating at all, I won't do another show. After the show is over, or if you watch it on replay, you can pause it and go see for yourself. Go on AEW's Twitter account, the at AEW. Go to the segment where what went down with Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus, and Christian Cage after the match was over. AEW on the Twitter account has two clips up. They have two clips up. Now, when you post video, you could post three minutes of video. The two clips, one is about 10 seconds. And the other one is about 30 seconds. So you may ask yourself, why divide it into two clips? It's all about Jungle Boy. Why divide it into two clips? Well, I'll tell you why. Because I saw it immediately. Because I said to myself, oh, I got to see how people react to this. Now, I want, when I said earlier, I want you to think of some of the stupidest things you've seen on TV over recent years. And then you turn around and you say to me, oh, my God, this was fucking horrendous. You know, anybody have a good example of one? You want to post one? You know, something that was just a storyline, a swerve, a turn that was absolutely stupid on TV. That was just awful. I know somebody tried to throw in my face today, Edge being kicked out of Judgment Day. That fucking storyline is not over yet. So you can't turn around and, and predict what is going to end up happening out of this. My point is this. Luchasaurus turned heel. He destroyed. Matt Hardy, he destroyed the Varsity Blondes. He is in the pocket of Christian Cage. Christian Cage destroyed verbally Jungle Boy's family, his mother, his father, everything else. Luchasaurus turned heel. And everybody loved the new look. Everybody loved the darkness. Methodical Luchasaurus is better than reckless. Let me just throw kicks wherever I feel like it, Luchasaurus. So what happens? Okay. If you didn't see it, just look at your screen. Okay. I can't show you all 10 seconds in one clip. You're looking at your screen right now. Jungle Boy comes down after the match is over. And Luchasaurus goes out of the ring. And Christian is standing inside the ring. And Jungle Boy wants to get 
at Christian Cage. So Jungle Boy has a stare down with Luchasaurus. Now, I want you to think of the last bunch of weeks with Luchasaurus as a heel. So what do you think happened next? Okay, Jungle Boy's picking up the chair. Luchasaurus kind of looks like he's looking at me, and he's like, don't say it. Don't say it. Shut the fuck up. I'm Tony, don't say it. Well, you're going to have to look the other way. There, there you go. He looks at Christian. And you never turn away from a chair, but Jungle Boy is ready to chair bash. Luchasaurus is looking at Christian. What does this motherfucker do after weeks and weeks and weeks of being a heel? What do you think he's going to do, everybody? You think Jungle Boy is just going to lay him out? You think Luchasaurus is going to try to attack Jungle Boy? No. Go ahead. Go ahead. Make your day. Go ahead. And Christian is like, huh? What the fuck is going on? What the hell? What the, what, what, what? And fucking Luchasaurus lets Jungle Boy chase Christian Cage into the crowd. After everything that we had for all those weeks, he just turns to the side. That is one of the dumbest, awful, least creative, moronic, ridiculous, pointless face turns I have seen in recent memory. He just flushed everything down the toilet. You know what that says? We don't know what the fuck to do with Luchasaurus so Jungle Boy could get to Christian Cage. We don't know what the fuck to do. So basically they stole Will Smith's one. I know it's a Goldberg retro 1998 candy, which I have not opened yet. But basically, they stole Will Smith's wand, and Tony Khan says, Dude, I got an idea. Like nothing ever happened. Stupid. Absolutely stupid. All right. Ricky Starks, as I said earlier, be Cole Carter, and then Dan Hauser comes out. Which is more interesting than you think. Next week, we're going to have Ricky Starks versus Danhausen for the FTW title. Remember who is friendly with Danhausen? Hook. Hook is with Taz. It's his dad. Well, that, Taz is his, his dad. Ricky Starks is Team Taz. So is Danhausen versus Ricky Starks designed to incorporate Hook into this? I don't know if anybody thought about that earlier, but that's the first thing I thought about. Thunder Rosa versus Chris Statlander, I believe, is supposed to be happening on Rampage. Uh, we found out today that Layla Gray was not cleared to wrestle. I don't know why, but we hope she's okay. So a six-woman tag match, trios match, was turned into a tag match. It was Willow Nightingale and Athena versus Jay Cargill and Kira Hogan. And uh, they came down to the ring with Jermaine Dupree, you know, hip-hop mogul, producer. I've even heard of Jermaine Dupree. I remember he was the one that discovered Criss Cross back in the day. You know, Criss Cross will make you jump, jump. Mac Daddy will make you jump, jump. I Googled it, too. <laughs> no, actually, I did hear his name before. I couldn't pinpoint it. But uh, a lot of hip-hop on AEW tonight, which was cool. But that tag match was, mm, was kind of rough, man. It was rough. Um, I want people to make the argument to me that Athena's first two months in AEW are better than what she was doing on WWE TV. You know, I mean, I just, I mean, I'm, I think it's the traveling more than anything else. I think it's the traveling. Because when you're traveling and you're driving countless hours and losing so much sleep and you're always on the go, and you, you feel like you're not being appreciated, I think that really drains you. But you show up every week and you get what you've gotten for the first two months. I just don't see it as a wrestling fan. I don't see it how Athena is better utilized now than before. It just doesn't feel that way. This tag match was very sloppy. You know, it had its moments, but overall it was, you know, you could see it's not a clash in styles. You know, Jay Cargill is coming along nicely. I'm not criticizing Jay Cargill at all. But when she tries to hang at Athena, when she's at the top of her game in a match, that's where it gets exposed. 
And when you see Athena and Jay Cargill exchanging in the middle of the ring the offense that everybody loves to do now, you know, J- Jay Cargill looks like Aubrey Edwards a little bit because she can't sell, you know, repeated shots like over and over again. She's like, she looks like she's surfing. And it was a mess. Kira Hogan, couple of spots, you know, didn't look very good. And there was one point where Athena hit the Meteora on Jay Cargill. And I honestly thought Jay Cargill fucked her shoulder up. She must have felt she was okay, but she must have felt that she landed a little bit awkward. She was selling the shoulder, and I was like, oh, shit. Hope she didn't injure herself. And it looks like she didn't. But in the end, Jade Cargill with the Jade on Willow. And they get the win. Um, FTR, great promo. Can't believe they couldn't put the Briscoes on TV for a little brawl or pro- pull apart. I mean, I know the AEW fans love FTR, but, you know, it's it's almost as bad as, you know, we haven't seen Jeff Jarrett show up on WWE after being announced as a special ref- referee for SummerSlam. We'll, we'll talk about Jarrett in a little bit. But FTR cutting a very, very good promo today. Uh, talking about the Ring of Honor match. Uh, talking about the Briscoes. And Dax telling a very, very personal story that I think a lot of people were not aware of. His daughter, at five years old, had issues. Breathing, health. They found she had a hole in her heart. That's serious shit, no matter how old you are. But for a five-year-old, you know, that's deep, serious shit. And, you know, the surgery was thought about this and that. And she had to do a lot of therapy, a lot of hard work, a lot of doctors of visits. And three years later, that hole in her heart healed. And now she's eight years old. And when somebody that young fights that hard and succeeds, how can I do any less? So Dax going into death before dishonor is going to fight like an eight-year-old. And it was an awesome story. You know, I've always said over the years, and I know a lot of you know this already, what I'm about to say, but some of the greatest promos that we have seen, the ones that are the most powerful are the ones that are based on reality. That's why Eddie Kingston always cut great promos. That's why Homicide always hit the strings. That's why even Heat Slater, when he made that one appearance on WWE TV on Raw, right after Drew won the title, that might be his greatest promo that we've ever seen. And it was based on reality. You know, Santana and Ortiz, a lot of their promos based on reality. When you could base things on reality, you know, and people could relate to that, doesn't get any better. So that was good. To me, honestly, yeah, I'm with you, Mike. I think the FTR promo might have been my favorite moment of the night. Main event, I enjoyed it as well. I'm not going to crap on the main event. But um, next week, well, actually, let me give you some previews uh thunder rosa chris statler i believe are facing each other on rampage i'm not 100 percent sure but i think that they are jamie Hayter and Britt baker are going to be appearing on rampage butcher and the blade versus john silver and hangman page uh lee moriarty versus dante martin which i was told originally that was happening tonight but it, they apparently it's being saved for rampage it is happening tonight just we'll air friday max castor and austin gunn having a rap battle and Jay Lethal versus Christopher Daniels. Nice retro match there. Christopher Daniels and Jay Lethal will have a bond burner for sure. Um, and we'll find out about Thunder Rosa and Chris Statlander. Next week, Thunder Rosa takes on Yamashita. And uh, that was the match that we talked about last week that she lost in Japan and Yamashita gets a, a title shot. So that'll happen next week. Uh, Jericho versus Eddie Kingston. I can only show you three seconds, but I love this fucking intro. I fucking love the intro. Everything about it was fucking awesome. I mean, Jericho, the guy is a performer, man. The guy is just an absolute performer. Um, Worked his ass off in this match. Did a Huracan Rana. You know, he did the middle rope, moonsault, the lion salt. You know, he hit everything. He could still go. And this match did feel important. It was barbed wire anywhere. And um, 
you know, the match was excellent. I mean, look, like I said, I hated some of the camera work that we saw today. Bob wire is scary shit. You know, trust me, I saw it firsthand. Uh, it is very scary, especially on the indie circuit where you don't cut parts of the barbs off because that shit is razor sharp. You cut it off, it's still pointy, and you still get cut. Look at Eddie Kingston's back tonight. Look at a little bit of Chris Jericho's body. You know, when they got stuck in the barbed wire and it's digging into your leg, that shit is legit. So they were taking some spots today that it it really hurt. That was not them just selling. So Jericho comes out first. Eddie Kingston comes out first. We got a microphone, live mic, wrapped in barbed wire. And Eddie Kingston starts wailing Jericho with the mic. And he's telling Jericho, you're going to bleed tonight. That's when we got the shoddy camera work, as I said earlier. And Eddie Kingston's digging the barbed wire in Jericho's head. Jericho gets tossed into the side of the ropes, into the barbed wire. And, um, you know, early on, you know, you could feel, I, I mean, the Jericho Appreciation Society suspended up in the air with the cage. Now, I will say one thing I thought was absolutely stupid. Why is Ruby Soho the one that controls the cage? Raising it, bringing it down, you know, like, what is she going to do? <laughs> like, what, what do you want back? <laughs> like, she's going to raise it up and down? She didn't have the key? Or she wasn't going to, like, why is she controlling it? Why isn't an AEW official controlling that? I thought that was awful, and I thought that was a dead giveaway that somebody was going to lay out Ruby Soho and open the cage, and that's exactly what happened. During the match, Ruby has got the remote control in the shock tank. They're suspended up in the air, and here comes Ty Conti. She starts brawling a little bit. Anna Jay runs down. Ty, what are you doing? And last week, we talked about it. Up oh, here's the other female for the Jericho Appreciation Society, Anna Jay lays out Ruby Soho, Anna Jay is now a part of the JAS. I actually like it. I actually like it. I know people that are huge fans of the Dark Order won't like it, but you could see that the Dark Order, even though they cut the emotional promo with minus one, negative one in the ring, I think it was, what, last year, last week or the week before, Dark Order will always be together in spirit, they're not splitting everybody up, but you see little bit by little, it's getting smaller and smaller. So Eddie Kingston sets up a board in the ring with the barbed wire. A couple of chair shots to Jericho with barbed wire wrapped around the chairs. Now, if you notice, you don't even attempt to do chair shots to the head because even with the barbed wires clipped a little bit, that shit could get tangled in your hair very very easily and you can't simply just pull your hair out of it that shit could get bad very very quickly but here's where jericho hits a huracan rana and kingston falls onto the board in the middle of the ring he fell mostly on his ass which you know it may have not have been a good visual because it didn't land on his head or his back which was exposed but that was just as bad because the material digs in and, you know, he has a little bit of a hard time. And then we go to pitcher and pitcher, which I was like, come on. You know, sometimes, oh, wait, we, we're going to stay with this match if it goes overtime. Not tonight. You know, we're going to have limited commercials for this big main event. Not tonight. So we go to pitcher and pitcher a little bit. Eddie Kingston with a vicious looking superplex outside drops Jericho onto the table. This is where Ty Conti comes out, Anna Jay focuses off of the two guys. I'm looking at the time, and we're now at 9.54 already. And I'm like, okay, this match is going home. And then we add the flub. Ty Conti gets the key. And then I hear the announcers, because I'm prepping for the show, I hear the announcers say, oh, what if she gave her the wrong key? And I'm like, huh? And I look, and she's having a hard time opening the cage. So I... I don't know if it's one of those locks that you have to like push something in when you turn the key, but she couldn't get it open at first. And you see them slide in through the shock tank, which was very smart in their part to improvise. So they get involved. Blackpool Combat Club get involved. 
here comes Ortiz with the loaded sock, wailing Hager, wailing Jericho with it. And then we had an awful ending. If you really look at it close, Jericho hit, I think the he hit, I don't even know how to explain it. But he had a chair in the ring wrapped in barbed wire, and he drops Kingston. And Jericho's face, it looked like it hit the barbed wire in the chair. And I'm looking at Jericho, and Jericho's going like this. And I'm like, oh, my God, I hope he didn't get poked. You know, and you look at close and like, okay, he seems all right, just a lot of blood on his face. But it was strange because Jericho picks up the chair. You would have thought Hulk Hogan was issuing chair shots. If you go back and you watch it, I'm not joking. Jericho, if this is a chair, Jericho went like this. It was such two very light chair shots that he Kingston to like the knees. And then Sammy Guevara shows up. And they were trying to set up where Guevara's holding Jericho, and I guess, uh, or, or he's holding Kingston, and I guess Jericho was supposed to hit Kingston, but hit Sammy instead, but... It just was a hot mess. Somebody just was totally off. I don't know who it was, but there was a weird moment where Jericho and Sammy are kind of hugging each other, and Eddie Kingston just pushes them both, and then Sammy just gets thrown on the outside. The end result, we thought Eddie Kingston was going to hit Chris Jericho with almost like Judas effect, you know, with the rever you know, the the punch. He brings in Bob Wire, but again, here comes Sammy and Jericho, you know, gets the upper hand on Kingston and Chris Jericho gets the win. I mean, I know we have said it many times before. Eddie Kingston's booking in AEW is very, very strange. If you really just pay close attention to it, moments that just fit perfectly beautifully for example the battle royal the winner gets a shot at moxley's interim championship and they give it to brody king everybody wanted kingston to win that match and yeah i know that they're kind of friends but kingston getting that title shot later on tonight you don't think would have been more appealing instead of brody king getting the shot. So, you know, you and you see Eddie gets a lot more losses than you. I mean, is this going to lead ultimately to Eddie Kingston winning the championship? And even if that is the case, when? When? So it was a decent show tonight. I think some things, if you keep it simpler, it would have been just fine. And what the fuck was the rush for Luchasaurus to do that. I mean, I don't get it. I just don't get it. You couldn't do something serious where Luchasaurus just like, you know, they can't think of something where somebody chases off Luchasaurus or Luchasaurus, you know, like picks up both members of the Varsity Blondes and walks to the back on their shoulders like he's taking his fallen prey and bringing them to slaughter or whatever. And then here comes, you know, and Christian maybe is walking down the rampway if, you know, like, you know, a little bit later and here comes jungle boy and Luchasaurus is already in the back or something like that. So you don't even, I mean, why not just hit jungle boys music and just have him show up on the stage? I mean, he chased Christian up the, the, you know, the crowd and it almost looked like, you know, Jungle Boy caught up to Christian. He's like, no, slow down. <laughs> I mean, what was the purpose? He chased him into the rafters. Okay, why not just have Jungle Boy on the stage, point to Jericho, and we don't know if he's pointing to both of them or Jericho, excuse me, pointing to Christian, or maybe he's pointing to both of them. Let him be on the stage. Just leave him on the stage. Leave the two guys in the ring. Luchasaurus is confused. Christian is upset and irate, and you go to commercial. You leave it at that. You do a segment next week. You know, Luchasaurus, you know, what's, you, what's your feelings on Jungle Boy back? And he doesn't say anything, and he walks away. 
or you know, Christian is like, you don't. What, what's the pause? Like, like if jungle, if Luchasaurus says nothing, Chris could go like this, and then Luchasaurus could just look at him, and Christian's like, okay, you know, I mean, what the fuck was the rush? I mean, they literally just destroyed the the Varsity Blondes, and Luchasaurus was total heel, and he sees Jungle Boy. You know what it kind of feels like? You know what it kind of feels like? It feels like an internet thug. Seriously, Luchasaurus is an inter the internet thug in his mommy's basement on a computer. That's what Luchasaurus is. And basically, for the last three or four weeks, Luchasaurus is on social media, and he's putting down a whole bunch of people putting down a whole bunch of people, being a total asshole, trolling everyone. And then he's live streaming, trolling everyone through the computer, saying all this horrible stuff, making fun of all these people. And then you look behind him and the door opens and it's like a friend of one of the persons that he's been dogging on social media. And he, the guy looks at the, hey, 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 oh, you're just kidding. No, it's fucking around. <laughs> Luchasaurus is a pussy keyboard gangster. Or there's something wrong with him. He's on the bus. All right. Let's quickly, quickly, let's get into predictions for Ring of Honor. They added two additional matches tonight. Um, as I said before, I don't want anybody to be mad at me for saying this. I'm not ordering it. You know, when I watch a lot of these guys on Dark and Elevation and I don't see Ring of Honor back on a regular basis or a semi-regular basis, the last time they had any event was the beginning of April, WrestleMania weekend. So what, what's the purpose of this? No, Ring of Honor is back. What do you mean? Why? Because you see a wrestler on Dynamite or Rampage or Dark or Elevation. But the titles, the titles, the titles. When's the next event? December? Like, that's not a promotion. That's someone using the name, using the titles, and making a payday. And hey, you know, look, WWE brought back ECW One Night Stand. And, and let me make this clear. If ECW was only one night stand, once a year, twice a year, and they did not bring back that garbage on sci-fi, even though I love the zombie, I would have been fine with it because you know what WWE was doing with ECW. You know it was going to be once or twice a year. You bring it back. Everybody loves it for the night or two, and that's it. But that's not the impression that they're given because you look at how the belts, people are chasing people away. Oh, this person's fighting this person for the title, and this is and that. They have a storylines going on every single week. But meanwhile, it's eating up AEW time. I want AEW shit on AEW TV. I didn't like the NWA stuff when WWF did it in the middle 90s. I didn't like some of the other influx. I don't give a shit about those promotions. I'm tuning into AEW. I want to watch AEW. I'm not spending $40 on a Ring of Honor pay-per-view on a promotion that is still on the shelf. It's still on the shelf. And the reason why they got to charge $40 is because of the amount of money that this shit costs to run plus the providers, plus the travel, the hotel, the, re the rental, the building, the insurance. That's why AEW doesn't do house shows. We had that conversation on Sunday. This is why AEW doesn't do house shows because this Tony Khan, they don't have the staff to work all this extra time and do all these extra events. That's why they have some people on board just to do these Ring of Honor events because you got a lot of wrestlers work in office and they work two days a week. You can't turn around and say to them, hey, we're going to start doing house shows one, two days a week. So we need you to be, you know, to run everything. You know, fuck, crazy. I don't know I get paid. I wasn't eye for that. So that's the problem when you kind of like work on the cheap. And they really are working on the cheap because you say to yourself, wouldn't AEW make boatloads of money if they did house shows? Even if they drew 3,000 people. You know, you put a lot of these Ring of Honor guys on those house shows. You could make that coin on it. All right. So anyway, so I'm not ordering it, but I will give you some very quick predictions. Now, they did add two matches tonight. Allison K versus Willow Nightingale. I know, I know a lot of people are like, oh, wow, Allison K. Um, 
Doesn't it feel like Willow Nightingale needs a win? I think she needs a win in Ring of Honor. If she's going to remain a regular on AEW television, she needs a win somewhere. And she got the loss tonight on Dynamite. And I'm going to go for Willow Nightingale because I'd like to see her get a substantial win in the win department. I think Alice Kay could play the you know, quintessential heel, get the Ring of Honor fans pissed off. I think Willow Nightingale should get the win. So I'm rooting for her. Next, you know, they are bringing back the six men, weren't they the tag team champions, the Righteous, Vincent, Bateman, and Dutch? I know some of you out there have never heard of these guys, but they're going to be taking on Dalton Castle and the boys. Um, I'm going to go with the Righteous to win, even though Dalton Castle, I hear Tony Khan is a huge fan of Dalton Castle. So it would not surprise me if Dalton Castle and the boys get the win. But I'm going to go with the Righteous to win this one. So Now, I don't know if those two matches are going to be on pre-show or not, but here's the other matches. Will Utah defending the, does was he have the Open Championship? What, what, cha what championship does Will Utah have? Let, you know what? I'm being lazy here. I can just look. There it is, the Pure Championship, the Open Championship. ET, it's a little late. He's defending. What the hell did I do? He, oh, we, we're having some fun tonight. All right. Blah, blah, blah. There we go. Willie Uta's defending the Pure Championship against Daniel Garcia. I tell you, this is the most intriguing match, I think, of the whole night. Because on one side, man, would it be cool if Daniel Garcia had this title? But AEW has this gigantic man crush on Willie Utah. I think Willie Utah is going to retain this championship, even though Daniel Garcia is my pick. Um, yeah, that's really all I can say about it. I mean, look, some of these matches, you know, some of them are very predictable. All right, here, Mercedes Martinez defending the women's championship against Serena Deep. I love both girls, both women. Been a fan of Mercedes Martinez for 20 years. Serena Deeb loved her stuff since back in the WWE days. Did not know much of Serena Deeb prior to that. A little bit with Ring of Honor. But here, I just, Serena Deeb is not a full timer. Mercedes Martinez is still much more active than you think. So I'm going Mercedes Martinez to retain her championship. All right, next on the list Samoa Joe defending. The TV championship, the TV title against Jay Lethal. Jay Lethal, man, give him credit. He's wrestling tonight against Christopher Daniels, which will air Friday. He's wrestling Samoa Joe on Saturday. And then next week, the tag match with Flair. I just feel that Samoa Joe's signing with AEW has been pathetic, horrendous. I mean, I think we expected a lot more from Samoa Joe. Jay Lethal has shined in all of this. We need a title change somewhere, don't you think? I, I actually do have a title change prediction. I think Samoa Joe, boy, I think Samoa Joe drops this title to Jay Lethal. I think Jay Lethal, man, you know, you just look at both guys and you feel that they're both not utilized to their potential in AEW. What do you do with Samoa Joe? I mean, is he designed just for Ring of Honor? When does he make AEW television again? When does he wrestle? I want to see him versus Keith Lee one-on-one -on -one again. Yeah, you know, like see them go at it a little bit. I think we go with Jay Lethal. I think Jay Lethal, you know, so fly, you're right. I think Samoa Joe... The injury risk that he is, you know, you appreciate when he's not injured, but holding that title. And again, you know, this promotion is not back full strength. So, you know, if there's going to be a title shown on AEW television, is it going to be Samoa Joe with it? I don't think so. I'm going to go with Jay Lethal to take the title. I'm, I think we'll get two title changes. Now, I say two because. FTR not dropping these titles. No fucking way. 
you can't even get the Briscoes to do a run-in on AEW television. And the next time you promote a Ring of Honor event, you're not even going to be able to have your tag team champions cut a promo on AEW TV. So I'm going with FTR to retain it, especially when people are complaining, like me, that FTR, you know, he's got belts for all these other promotions. They don't have the AEW belts. You know, if you really look at it, it seems like, okay, you know, we'll celebrate all of their victories everywhere else. But when it comes to our promotion, eh, they're not high on our, as high on our list as people think. So FTR will defeat the Briscoes. They will retain their Ring of Honor Tag Team Championships. Then we go to the main. Claudio Castagnoli challenging Jonathan Gresham for the Ring of Honor Heavyweight Championship. I like Jonathan Gresham. Very, very talented. Reminds me a little bit of Taz from back in the day. I just don't get that feeling that Tony Khan and AEW are extremely into Jonathan Gresham. Just don't feel it. They brought him on Battle of the Belts, and that was just horrible. Just horrible. We watched Rampage on Friday, and he wrestled Lee Moriarty, and that was a train wreck. You had so much noise piped in, and you looked at the crowd, and there was almost no reaction on that whole match. And I'm like, this is the same people that if the lights went off and came back on and Jonathan Gresham was in the ring, they would all yell, this is awesome, or holy shit. Holy. That match was deader than a door, doorknob. Claudio Castagnoli is going to beat Jonathan Gresham and take that championship. AEW, Tony Khan, they love Claudio Castagnoli. We love Claudio Castagnoli. Claudio Castagnoli is a more ideal Ring of Honor champion for Tony Khan's, you know, Ring of Honor slash AEW than Jonathan Gresham. I just don't get this aura that there is this tremendous desire for Jonathan Gresham in AEW. So I'm going to go with Claudio to become your new Ring of Honor champion. So those are your Ring of Honor, Death Before Dishonor predictions. All right, before we briefly talk about NXT, so we'll be finishing within the next 25 minutes. Uh, I want to quickly just give away this Nikita Lyons autograph photo. This is for everybody that was not only at the watch party yesterday, but active. So I am going to put the wheel on the screen. Some people have two picks because they were very active on the stage. Some people have one. It is my choosing. When someone shows up five minutes before NXT goes off the air and wants to go on stage, no, it don't work that way. So uh, it's only fair for everyone else who hangs out for almost the entire show. So good luck. Who wins the Nikita Lions signed photo? As I take a sip of my water. Who gets it? Who gets it? Viper Fett. Viper Fett. Viper shows up almost every week. Congrats, Viper. Viper gets the photo. Viper gets the photo. I don't think Kevin Milwaukee was on the stage yesterday. So, anyway, all right. NXT. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I love Wisps. Any of you out there eat Wisps? It's only one gram of carbs. Wisps. I popped more for the Wisps yesterday than the NXT championship being in the trash. Holy shit. Did Cora Jade and WWE trigger the wrestling world yesterday? I mean, look, I totally respect anyone out there that dislikes WWE's decision-making. And sure, maybe you think the women's tag team division is awful. Why do you think you have unified men's titles right now? Not only heavyweight and universal, but tag. Why wouldn't you do that? Because the tag team divisions have been lackluster. 
And WWE's realized we could do just as much business with less. WWE is not obligated to have the same number of men's titles as women's titles. A lot of people thought that some of the women being used was smoke and mirrors, you know, to appease, you know, the, uh, a noise out there. But there are going to become times where it does become stagnant. You're not going to have women's tag teams stay together just to fill a role. If they're not delivering, nothing you could do about that. You know, if you're not creatively producing good content where they can develop further, yeah, that's on you, but you don't keep them around anyway. So, you know, so I understand the frustration with Sasha and Naomi, but I was shocked. I was shocked at the number of people when Cora Jade threw that women's championship in the trash yesterday, how people immediately got triggered with Naomi and Sasha Banks. Cora Jade and WWE are mocking Sasha Banks and Naomi. I think that's a little bit of a stretch. I think that is a stretch. And I'll tell you why. Because last week, and even yesterday when we had the watch parties, we all had the same question. Who's the next contenders to take on Roxanne Perez and Cora Jade? You can't do Katana Chance and Caden Carter. They got already shots. They were a great American bash, and they got a shot to become number one contenders three weeks ago. You're not going to bring them. You're not going to start just randomly putting NXT women together as a tag team and suddenly contend for titles when they're still green as grass. Toxic attraction, you want them to hold the belts for five years? You know, you can't just keep going back to toxic attraction. You just can't. So all you got to do is just look at the roster and say, wow, there's really nobody to challenge them for the tag titles. So they turned it into a storyline. And anybody that follows my shows, I said last week exactly what Cora J was going to say last night, that as soon as they won the tag titles, not even 30 minutes later, instead of Roxanne talking about who we get to defend these titles against first, she challenges Mandy Rose. So in Cora Jade's mind, Roxanne is a selfish bitch. That's the storyline. I helped my friend get in NXT. I won the tag titles with my best friend. And what's the first thing that my best friend does? No, she doesn't care about the team. She cares about herself. She wants to take on Mandy Rose for the championship. That's why Cora did what she did. Great storyline. Makes sense. So Cora, because she dislikes Roxanne that much, as far as she's concerned, she doesn't give a shit about the tag title. She dumps it in the trash, and she walks off. Cora Jade cut an immense promo yesterday. The storyline made total sense. She doesn't give a shit about the tag titles. She just fucked Roxanne Perez by throwing her one half of the titles in the trash. She screwed Roxanne last week. She screwed Roxanne yesterday. And all people could focus on is WWE's mocking Sasha Banks and Naomi. I mean, like I said, I respect people's thoughts on that, but WWE's producing storylines and trying to elevate the stars of tomorrow. That's all that is. If WWE has done a rough job building the women's tag team division, do you want them to keep the belts around? You know, the funny thing is, the funny thing is, Benjamin, it's not a shot at the main roster. It's like the people the other day. Oh, Titus O'Neil was talking about Vince McMahon. Yeah, well, Vince McMahon was backstage as a head of creative. Titus, go out there and throw some jabs at me. I like it. They all work together. They all work together. The wrestlers have friendly competition to grab a spot, but they're not out to hurt each other. You know, that's what people don't understand. You, you don't have competition to try to hurt people of your own company. You know, 
that's that's the deal here. All right. Yeah, the Lib Morgan giveaway, we'll do it on Friday. You know, Lib Morgan's not part of NXT. We'll do it Friday. So, you know, I see people give what Lib Morgan, Lib Morgan. I see I, you know, we'll do it Friday. All right. And yes, let me also say one thing. The wheel that you saw today, that wheel will be Friday also. So when we're not doing a Lib Morgan giveaway. You know, people start expecting that's when we pull it away. So all right. Getting back, all right, focus, DT, focus. So you know what I thought about yesterday when I saw that? You know what I thought? Who's going to put their hand in the trash and take the title out? As long as it's not Hacksaw Jim Duggan. What if Nikita Lyons takes that title out of the pill? What if somehow she says, Roxanne, I'll be your partner? What if someone else pulls it out of the trash? I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I'm just saying, like, WWE's not trying to fuck the women's divisions. WWE's not trying to lessen opportunity for their wrestlers. If they were going to ditch the women's tag team division, they're not going to do it in a way where it's going to piss off the wrestlers that are going for that. Everything is scripted. But when you do become champion, that means that WWE has an investment in you and they feel that you are worthy and you are to that next level. Otherwise, titles would never matter. It's funny when people say the titles don't matter, but then when something like this happens, it's everything about the titles. So I say, I say, Cora Jade cut an immense promo yesterday, made sense, made the feud make sense. Roxanne didn't make an appearance. There's going to be a big feud. And, you know, we should not lose sight of that because she decided... I'm not going to be Roxanne's partner. I'm not going to be, if I have to sacrifice the title doing so, no problem, throws the title in the trash. That's how much she cares about Roxanne Perez. This is more about Cora Jade turning into a heel than anything else. So let's see where that goes from here. All right. Something else happened yesterday, and much love to all of you out there that remember, you know, that makes me feel good. Uh, we had a revelation yesterday. Where is my picture? There it is. The night, um, go check if you think I'm making up. The night the Dyad debuted with Joe Gacy, the night they debuted, I said, should be the Grizzled Young Veterans. I think they have hit rock bottom in WWE. I said, you either... Make it the Grizzled Young Veterans, or you bring them to the main roster, or you let them go. And, you know, sure, over the last bunch of weeks, a lot of people started thinking, hey, I think it's going to be a Grizzled Young Veterans, Grizzled Young Veterans. And the dyad removed their hood yesterday to reveal that they are, in fact, the Grizzled Young Veterans. However, now uh, they have a little bit of a different look about themselves. The facial hair is gone. We get the fake contact lens. And this is your new version of the, the dyad, the Grizzled Young Veterans. I fucking love it. I love it. I, not even because we ended up being right as far as who it was or who it should have been. But I love the look. I love the look. I mean, the funny thing is, now they look grizzled young. Now they look young. Before, they didn't look so young. I like it. I like it. Even though the guy on the right, I can't remember what his new name is going to be. Is it, is it uh, Jagger Reed? It might be, but he looks like a member of Kraftwerk. If anybody, you know my love for Kraftwerk. He looks like a member of Kraftwerk. But they, they showed them removing the facial hair. And this is their new look now, and I like it. You know why I like it so much also? I used to hate the Grizzly Young Veterans. If anybody tunes into my shows, when they were on TV, remember when I used to do the quarter hour ratings breakdown, and we would always focus on how many viewers they would lose when the Grizzly Young Veterans were on the quarter hour? They were not a ratings draw. They were good in the ring. But they never had that connection. Remember I said that they're going to they're gonna have to do some comedy? 
that might be their last hope. And they actually did a little bit of comedy and it didn't work either. So they look like a brand new team. But if you remember the Grizzled Young Veterans, you know how good they work. So here you got two guys that look like brand new signees, but these are the Grizzled Young Veterans. So now they have a character. Now they have a pers persona, and now they're part of this gimmick with Joe Gacy. I'm all in for it right now. I like it. I like it. I'm willing to give it a shot, man. Willing to give it a shot. The look is good. Let's hope they don't screw it up. Not just WWE creative, but them. So let's give it, give it a chance. Let's see what it does. So, all right. Match results from yesterday or Tuesday. Yeah, from yesterday. What am I saying? J.D. McDonough over Cameron Grimes. Roderick Strong over Damon Kemp. That was awful. You go back and you watch it. They put Tony D'Angelo on the screen and them and Legato are beating up the other member, the, the Cree brothers. And um, if you look closely, you see Damon Kemp like whisper something to Roderick Strong. And then because it's supposed to be that Damon Kemp is kind of distracted at the, the screen of, you know, the Cree brothers getting beat down. He just like flubs to the middle of the, the side of the ring and he's just like moving around. And we even said in the watch, we're like, where the fuck are you going? He just like walked into like, hey, you're supposed to, it was just awful. The finish of that match was so awful. And then afterwards, Damon kept walking around like somebody was on methamphetamines. I mean, seriously, it looked like somebody, it looked like somebody who was on methamphetamines that had a toothache because Roddy hit him with the knee. And he's outside the ring. If you ever see those people that are on, on what, that, what's that street, Kensington Avenue in Pennsylvania? He looked like somebody on Kensington Avenue in Pennsylvania. He's like this. And then he's selling it in the back. And Roddy, I love Roderick Strong, man. But he talks like Marina Shafir wrestles. He's got this... So unintimidated, like, honestly, if I was in a dark alley and Roderick Strong was wearing that hood that he wears and he walked up to me and said, give me your money, I'd fucking laugh. I'd fucking laugh. Did you ever, you listen closely how Roderick Strong talks? Come on, guys. We got to be better than that. We got to be better than that. You, you can't take that from the D'Angelo. He, he sounds like my 85-year-old grandfather, God rest his soul, when he had no teeth. Look, we can't take that stuff. He is so un unintimidating. You hear him cut a promo? He almost sounds like somebody who breeds in a helium balloon. You're like, all right, we got to cut a promo. <laughs> You got to stop all this shit. We got to be better than this. We're diamond mine. <laughs> the most unintimidating member of the Undisputed Era. I swear to God, I got to put some audio. Next week, we got to put, we got to do it. We got to do it. We got to put, put some Roderick Strong audio on the show. Five seconds worth. You listen to it. It's like, he's, I want to laugh. I want to laugh. C come on, guys. You got to yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty, Kensington Avenue is pretty pretty rough, man. I really do legitimately feel bad. Not only do I feel bad about them, I get mad at the people on YouTube that are banking so much money off of them. They literally just drive right up, and they just park right in front of these people that are all zooted out, and they just film them for hours. And those people don't care. They just, like, concerned about their drugs. And then... You know, how I started watching the videos is every time you look at the thumbnail, they find like the hottest chick that's all drugged up and they keep putting that same picture on the screen. And you think, oh, this video is going to show hot babes on drugs. I mean, it's not that I enjoy it. It's fucked up. But they're being exploited, man. But yeah, getting back to Roddy Strong. He's so unintimidating. Plus his head you ever see that Tom and Jerry commercial where, like, they breathe in the balloon and, you know, the big head? Roderick Strong's head, it's, like, big for his body. I don't know. I mean, it just go look back. Just look at the size of his head and listen to him. And I'm a fan of his work. 
I don't know what happened. All right. Briggs and Jensen retained the NXT UK titles, which surprised the shit out of me. I honestly thought Pretty Deadly was taking them and taking them back to the UK. Not just yet. Uh, so they keep the NXT UK tag titles. Axiom over Dante Chen. And, okay. We're trying to figure it out, everybody. Two weeks ago, 8, 10, 11. Last week, Wordle. I said wordy. People are like, that's not wordy, it's Wordle. What was the word? Well, we found out yesterday that that was for Zoe Stark. We saw a cryptic video yesterday and always saw women's boots. And then those same women's boots were on the feet of Zoe Stark. She entered the women's battle royal and she won it. So she will be taking on Mandy Rose soon for the NXT Women's Championship. Now, after the show was over, I was saying to myself, did WWE ever explain what these cryptic messages were? Okay, I thank everybody who commented online, DM me, and emailed me of what they believe the cryptic messages were. First off, this one. Zoe Stark got injured at Halloween Havoc last year. So the Havoc was not Jessica Havoc, as a lot of people thought, but it was Halloween Havoc. And, okay, I, that's good with me. Because the O, remember what we said, the O is either the first letter or the fourth letter. So for Halloween Havoc, it would be the fourth letter. So it was for Halloween Havoc. That's where she got injured. Now, this... This is a little confusing. Somebody said that it was a Bible verse. And you look up the Bible verse, and it talks about strong person. But someone else, and then I started getting a bunch of similar messages that this may represent the timeline as far as when she got injured and when she came back. Now, the eight is definitely not months because she got injured last year, I believe, in October. Halloween Havoc is in October. So you go November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July. She came back the ninth month. So if you say to me, well, maybe she was ready to come back a little sooner. So maybe it was really the end of June. So it's really, maybe it's really eight months. Or maybe it's like, okay, fine. Then what's the 10? Some people said, well, it might be 10 days. or It's not. It's not. So we don't know yet about the 8, 10, 11. Um, what I would have done if I was WWE yesterday, if the 8, 10, 11 is a Bible verse, we should have heard a scrambled voice yesterday read an excerpt from the Bible verse. You didn't have to say, you know, John 8, 10, 11, whatever it is, but you just distorted voice or you have the same voice for, you know, the one that hyped up Giovanni Vinci, that really deep female European voice, almost sounded like a French version of China. Giovanni Vinci, Giovanni Vinci, Giovanni Vinci. I would have used a, a voice and just read the phrase, and everybody could hear it, and like, what the fuck is this? And then people could Google the phrase, and then it pops up that it's a Bible verse, 8, 10, 11. That's what I would have done. So next week, hopefully, they scramble it. All right. Uh, next week, funny, we got Apollo Crews versus Zion Quinn. It's Zion Quinn's fantasy to beat up Apollo Crews. Grayson Waller versus Wesley. The Diamond Mine will be taking on Tony D'Angelo, Stax, and Legado del Fantasma. We expect Santos Escobar to return next week. Um, no mention of him yesterday. And something else. We had a little interaction with Cameron Grimes and Joe Gacy. And it's, oh, did you hear the, did you hear the Jeremy Boris Easter egg yesterday? Did, did anybody hear the Jeremy Boris Easter egg? We got a cameo from Jeremy Boras yesterday. When I mean, Cameron Grimes lost the match and he was in the back, all you heard was some voice extremely high-pitched. He's like, 
Herod, what do you think about it? He's like, not now. That was Jeremy Borash. That was Jeremy Borash. Charlie, I've been ignoring your comment all night because you're using a word ending in L-Y. Any wrestling websites that write something and they use a word with L-Y, like supposedly, possibly, likely, you know, uh, evidently, you know, that's when they're saying, like, we really don't know. But we're going to tease it anyway because we want you to read our shit. So when you could write it without the word ending in L-Y, that's when I take it as fact. Jeremy Barsh was a WCW TNA Impact Wrestling guy. You don't say. I like Jeremy Barsh. At one point, I didn't like him. And if, for people that don't know why, anybody remember back in the day when TNA used to do house shows? And every time I heard, I wanted to punch him in the mouth. He would go to like Brussels. He would go to Florida. He'd go to Texas. He'd go to England. He'd go to Spain. He'd go to New York. He'd go to Miami. He'd go to Puerto Rico. And at the end of every show, you've been such a great crowd. In fact, you've been so great that I talked to Dixie and we're going to, I'm going to, we might be able to come back here and do a pay per view. And then every week, Wrestling Observer, John Schmick, John Schmuck was at the show and he gave all the match results. And at the end of the show, Jeremy Barr said, We were so great and so lively that they might come back with a pay per view and lots of smiley face emojis. And then you'd think after like the 10th person that says that, like, um, you know, stop dicking us around, Dixie. Stop dicking us around. So, all right. So, Joe Gacy and Cameron Grimes having a little interaction yesterday. Some people think, is Joe Gacy, is Cameron Grimes going to shave? Is he going to be part of the dyad? I don't think so. I think Cameron Grimes will be feuding with Joe Gacy. I fucking, there's something, look, I know we're kind of like tired of trios matches. But that wouldn't look the same if it was only two people. And I don't think it would look the same if it was four people. For some reason, a trifecta just looks awesome in the ring, in the, in the photos. Leave it three. Leave it three. Looking good in photos. Oh, we got to talk about this. We got to talk about this. Now, next week, we'll get into the full card. Because this doesn't happen until next weekend. But the card is loaded. This would be like 12 matches. There's some awesome matches on this card. And they're not done yet. I think they announced more matches tonight. So next week, we'll get into the lineup. But I got to be totally honest with you. I saw the video of Jeff Jarrett and a little bit of Jay Lethal. But it was Jeff Jarrett attacking Ric Flair. And all I thought about was this. Anybody remember 2009, Australia? I remember Breakfast with Blossie, the Don Tony and Kevin Castle show, Wrestling Soup, every podcast that we were around, everybody was ripping this alive. It was worse than like a, you know, like a old timers game. Ric Flair looked ridiculous. And this was because he looked too old. He looked too old. And this was 13 years ago. I got the same vibes watching that Jeff Jarrett, Ric Flair video that I got with this. And I'm going to show you why. I did a little research, did a little research. Okay, this is 2009. All right, dressed in suits, T-shirt, Hogan is still built. You know, a little do-rag, you know, to hide the bald spot. You know, suntan, some extra jewelry. You know, a little bit of the arms cut off so you don't see like the little bit of fat hanging around the back of it. You know, it does, this doesn't look half bad. You know, when you look at that, that's not half bad. But when you look at this, you're like, okay, um, you know, what the fuck is that? So you got this. All right, fine. Now, this week, we get this. Press conference. Okay, Jeff Jarrett doesn't wear a do-rag. 
kind of has the same mustache. If you really think about it, kind of looks almost the same, you know. He, but look, press conference, Ric Flair, you know, styling and profiling, Jeff Jarrett looking a little bit classy as well. So, you know, kind of same thing, all right? So now we get the beat down. This was 2009. Ric Flair beating Hulk Hogan to a pulp. That was 2009. My friends, this is 2022. It looks like the same. Look, Jeff Jarrett's wearing a T-shirt. And all you have to do is wear a white T-shirt and go, I'm going to kill you on your last match, brother. The same fucking thing. It's the same fucking thing. This was Hulk Hogan afterwards. Brother, let me bleed, brother. The more blood it looks, more it looks good, brother. This was 2009, brother. This is Ric Flair yesterday. Come on, man. Does that make you want to see a match? Or does that just, like, look horrible? I mean, this is really what we got. I mean, it is identical. Whoa, ho, ho, yo. Hey, hey, that was awful. That is bad. You go back at 2009, this is mirror of it. Now, do I expect Ric Flair to take the shirt off? No, I don't expect him to take the shirt off. I expect Jay Lethal and Ric Flair to have very similar exchange like we saw in a pre-recorded video. The fact that Andrade and Jay Lethal are getting involved with this is excellent because they will absorb most of the workload. But make no mistake about it. The reason why they're doing a the tag team is because Ric Flair, no matter how much he can bullshit us, that I'm 90% of what I was before and I'm better than I was in 2009, I'm better than I was in two. It's not. It's not. We're dealing with almost an 80 year old man with a major heart issue health problems, the joints, the body. I don't care how good you feel. It just doesn't go anymore. That's why it's almost never anybody that age is in the ring. I will say this. Jeff Jarrett is really trying to make this as big as possible. I got to give the guy credit. I mean, it's not easy, but this, unfortunately, just gives me vibes of 2009. It just, I don't know. I, I just can't get that off of me. But, you know, look, we got two other guys in the match so we could focus on them a little bit. You will see a lot of fun moments with Ric Flair and Jay Lethal. And who knows, maybe Charlotte Flair does make an appearance. Maybe she does get into a little cat fight with Karen Jarrett. But, um, yeah, next week, we will definitely run down the card. I mean, if you want to see something now, you could pause this, and you could look at it a little bit closer. And this is not even a full card yet. There are more matches that they were announcing, but we got some pretty nice array of cards. You know what? You know what? Let me just fucking spin this, because I know people are going to be upset. I promised I was going to do a Liv Morgan photo here. Let's do this before we go off the air. Who's going to win it? Who's going to win it? I don't want to do it Friday because I don't want anybody to do it. All right, who's going to win it? Full Monty. All right, Full Monty, you get the Liv Morgan photo because I did say I was going to do another one. So Full Monty got it. All right, so with that said, what are we? A little drop over 90 minutes. So I don't think we need to cover anything else. Uh, one thing I don't think you want me to cover. I had to put it on my Twitter yesterday. I think people wanted to see it, right? You know, it's funny. It's funny how people think because you see a bikini shot, it should be TV 14. You know, TV 14 is not what people realize that it is. SummerSlam will be TV 14. It is a pay-per-view. It's a premium live event. You're going to see some over-the-top violence. You're going to see some crazy shit go down. Stuff that may not be suitable, you know, for regular television. You know, I would think that you would want to see a little bit extra 
on a premium live event compared to regular TV. You know, so good. Um, Chris Maycock, he said that he was, he took his glasses off for a minute. So all he saw was blurriness. So he wanted me to just show this again. So uh, there you go. And for the women out there, you know, because I want to be equal opportunity. You know, I want to, I don't want to be biased. For the women out there, I got a picture for you also. So there you go. <laughs> no, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got a, I got a picture for you. Hold on. I got a picture for you. There you go. There you go. You can have that. You can have that. So, all right. Oh, you know, and we got this. You can have that. All right. So I'm going to jet out of here. I think we covered everything. NXT's rating was 588. You know, I laughed at some websites today. They said, oh, NXT was the 10th lowest rating that they've gotten in 2022. Now, how many weeks have gone by so far in 2022? About 30? Okay. So 10th worst. Sounds awful, right? The average rating in 2022, it's 589. So which is more honest? The fact that it's the 10th worst rating in 2022, or they hit their average? I think NXT has been very consistent with their ratings. I think people need to stop focusing on the ratings with NXT because this is developmental. We should be kind of privileged that we are allowed to watch developmental as it goes down. I wish we had a USA Network or a network airing Ohio Valley Wrestling or, or you know, eight Heartland back in the early 2000s when they were building up Batista and Randy Orton and John Cena and Shelton Benjamin and other wrestlers back then. You know how much I would have loved watching that stuff on a weekly basis? It's kind of good that we didn't because people would have thought they were fucking awful at that time. You know, so I like that we could, you know, oh shit, I did forget to cover something. I did, I did forget, you know, yeah, we got to reveal this. <laughs> hey, she, she's attractive. She's attractive, you know. And hey, she's posing. It's not like, you know, she was like, no, no cameras, please. And she, you know, somebody snapped the picture. So, um, I don't, that's why I don't even criticize Rampage's rating anymore. I mean, you realize, you know, what it's become. It's Their ratings are right around 500,000, and that's kind of being a little bit, you know, giving. But, you know, I think it's more the time slot. I think if, if AEW moved Rampage to seven, I honestly think that they would score seven, 800,000 viewers. The question is, is seven, 800,000 viewers good for a 7 p.m. time slot? I don't know. I don't work for network, so I couldn't answer that question. But uh, look, I hope everybody enjoys Ring of Honor this weekend. No question, it's going to be a good event. For fans of Ring of Honor, you know probably the Briscoes versus FTR is going to give you a lot of your money's worth right there. And a lot of these guys, you know, again, it, you know what the funny thing is, and I will admit this. First of all, a lot of those guys I don't think would have ever been in ECW, but if this was an ECW event, I probably would have watched it, you know, but the thing is $40 for a promotion that's not back is, is you're asking a lot. You're asking a lot. And that $40 is because they, they don't, I don't think they think this pay your buy rate is going to be all that big. I would be surprised if they got more than 60,000 buys. I'd be very surprised if they get more than 60,000. And guess what? If they get 60,000 buys, I don't know what Ring of Honor's pay-per-view buy rates were back then. I would not be surprised if this is the greatest pay-per-view buy rate in the history of Ring of Honor. I kid you not. You know, I think a lot of people don't understand some of Ring of Honor's pay-per-views drew less than 1,000 buys. So, you know, you get 40, 50,000 buys. That is a success. That is a success. But, you know, we'll see what happens. So, everyone. You know, leave your questions, comments. If you enjoyed the show, smash that like button. If you like this, smash that like button. If you're a fan of Wisps, smash that like button. 
If you like bleeding old men, smash that like button. If you like Nikita Lyons, smash that like button. If you're into hip hop and Kevin Gates, smash that like button. Hey, if you like me, smash that like button. All right, I'm going to jet out of here. All right, check it out. Very important. There is a poll in the community section right now about this Saturday show. Want you to vote if you want Saturday morning to return or Saturday night. Now, I added an extra time slot, and it's very interesting the response I've gotten so far. And I have a feeling we may have found our sweet spot. Last week, I did a Breakfast with Blossy edition of the Don Tony show. Everybody loved it. Got to tweak the intro a little bit because I did get some complaints from the higher ups. Um, we'll talk about that another day. But last week, we did the show at 10 a.m. live. The, ch the choices this week are 10 a.m. live again, 8 p.m. like we used to, or 11 a.m. And I'm not going to lie to you, a lot of people like the 11 a.m. idea. And I have a feeling this Saturday show will air live at 11 a.m. And I wonder if that time slot sticks. Because 11 a.m., you know, it was kind of rough me getting up at 10 a.m. and then rushing to set everything up. So I think 11 a.m. may be the time slot for this Saturday. And who knows, that may stick for the foreseeable future. Now, next week is, is SummerSlam. So I don't know if there's going to be a morning show. But we may do one just to pre do a preview of SummerSlam and do some predictions. So as of right now, I, ex I think I will be doing a show next Saturday morning, but it'll be a very, very fast show, just given some SummerSlam previews, predictions, some fantasy booking, you know, like we did last time with Money in the Bank. But, yeah, go on the community section and vote. Let me know what time you'd like for the show to be live Saturday. And uh, by tomorrow, we should know. And then I'll announce it on Friday. So, all right. Be well, everyone. Yeah, Sunday remains the same unless there's a pay-per-view. So I hope everyone has a great night. Post your questions, your feedback. As you noticed, the last couple of days, I've been very, very busy answering comments from your posts on YouTube. Uh, so post any questions that you may have, uh, any feedback from the show. What did you think about the Luchasaurus turn tonight? You know, I like I said, I totally respect what anybody feels about there. But, you know, let me know what you think. Everyone, it's been real. It's 10 to midnight. And I realize we did go a little bit late. Now, I am not watching Ring of Honor Saturday. Yo, Adrian. No. Um, Saturday is actually my fiance's uh, shower. She has, she, I think she knows, but she's not supposed to. So I got to take her to that shower. And then Saturday night. You know, I don't know. I'll be stealing her envelopes. So be well, everyone. I hope to see you either Friday night for the watch parties. Just check out my social media, Twitter, at Don Tony D for a preview and what will be up for grabs. And uh, if not Friday, join me Saturday. We'll see if it's morning or nighttime. So how ridiculous. Before I go, seriously, everyone else, you can disconnect. But. I got a legit question for everybody who was here since the beginning of the show. How ridiculous did my tits look? Seriously, was it very embarrassing? Did you get a good laugh? You're like, oh, DT, man, you got to freaking work out. Are they that bad? Seriously, was it bad? Because, like I said, people were giving me bullshit on social media, and I saw people earlier. Like, I'm like, do people even listen what I said about the TV 14? I said at least 20 times, they are bringing TV 14 back. But it's not coming back the way people said. They think PG era is dead. You seem worse. Okay. At least I don't have the Brillo pad for chest hair anymore. A lot of it is grayed. But, you know, I hope the people that I was addressing it to didn't get up too upset at me. You know, the fact that I showed my tits, you know, you should get a good laugh out of it, so... All right, everyone, have a good night. I'm going to put this online and get myself some sleep. So you all be well, stay safe, and I'll talk to you soon. Chris says he didn't see them. Very smart man. As far back as I can remember,
I always wanted to be a podcaster. For me to live any other way was nuts. To me, those goody good people who work shitty jobs for bum paychecks and took the subway to work every day and worried about their bills were dead. I mean, they were suckers. They had no balls. If I wanted something, I just took it. I ran everything. I paid the bills. I paid the host. I even paid the masked maniac. Everybody had their hands out. Everything was for the taking. We always called each other good fellas. You would always hear from somebody. You're gonna like Don Tony. He's all right. He's a good fella. He's one of us. But if you're part of my crew, nobody ever tells you they're gonna get rid of you. It doesn't happen that way. There weren't any arguments or curses like in the movies. See, your haters come with smiles. They come as your friends, the people who've claimed they care the most for your life. And now, now that's all over. And that's the best part. Today everything is different. There's lots of action. I don't have to wait around for everything like everyone else. Oh, I didn't get the vaccine? Fuck you, vaccine me. Oh, your delivery guy has COVID? Fuck you, feed me. Right after I moved here, I ordered egg noodles and ketchup. And I got spaghetti with meat sauce. I'm no longer an average nobody, while they get to live the rest of their lives like a bunch of schnooks.